Chapter 12 of A Catechism of Familiar Things. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ashwin Jain. A Catechism of Familiar Things. Their History and the Events Which Led to Their Discovery by Benziger Brothers. Chapter 12 Spectacles, Mariner's Compass, Barometer, Thermometer, Watches, Clocks, Telescope, Microscope, Gunpowder, Steam Engine, and Electromagnetic Telegraph. When were spectacles invented and who was their inventor? It is supposed that they were first known about the 13th century and invented by a monk of Pisa in Italy named Alexander de Spina. Spectacles are composed of two circular pieces of glass set in a frame. What are these glasses called? Lenses. They are either convex or concave according to the kind of sight requiring them. Old people and those who can only see things at a distance from the flatness of the eye which prevents the ray of light converging so as to meet in the center, require convex lenses. People who can only distinguish objects when viewed closely, from the eye being too convex, require concave lenses to counteract it by spreading the rays and thus rendering vision distinct. Convex rising outwardly in a circular form, opposite to concave. Concave hollow, round but hollow, as the inner curve of an arc, etc. Converging, tending to one point from different parts. Vision, the faculty of seeing. What is the mariner's compass? A most useful and important instrument, by the aid of which the navigator guides his ship on the sea and steers his way to the place of his destination. The inventor of the mariner's compass is not known, nor the exact time of its introduction. It was employed in Europe in navigation about the middle of the 13th century and has been in use more than 500 years. The Chinese are said to have been acquainted with it much earlier, but no reliance can be placed on their dates. The power of the lodestone to attract iron was known to the ancient Egyptians but was not applied to any practical purpose. Navigator, one who guides a ship. Steer, to direct or guide a vessel in its course. Destination, the place to which a person is bound. Practical, capable of practice, not merely speculative. What is the lodestone? An ore of iron which possesses the peculiar property of attracting iron, namely, of drawing it in contact with its own mass and holding it firmly attached by its own power of attraction. A piece of lodestone drawn several times along a needle or a small piece of iron converts it into an artificial magnet and if this magnetized needle is carefully balanced, it will turn round of itself till its end points towards the north. The magnetized needle also possesses the power of attracting iron and of communicating this power to another piece of iron or steel, similar to that of the lodestone itself. Contact, touch, magnetized, rendered magnetic. Describe the mariner's compass. The mariner's compass consists of a circular box enclosing a magnetized bar of steel called the needle carefully balanced on an upright steel pivot and having that end which points to the north shaped like the head of an arrow attached to this needle and turning with it is a card on which are printed the divisions of north south east and west called the points of the compass by simply looking at the position of the needle the mariner can see the direction in which his vessel is sailing and regulate his helm accordingly. Helm, 
the instrument by which a ship is steered, consisting of a rudder and tiller. What is a barometer? An instrument for measuring the weight of the atmosphere, which enables us to determine the chances of the weather, the height of mountains, etc. It consists of a glass tube hermetically sealed at one end, filled with mercury, and inverted in a basin of mercury. According to the weight of the atmosphere, this mercury rises or falls. How is the hermetic seal formed? By heating the edges of a vessel till they are just ready to melt and then twisting them closely together with hot pincers so that the air may be totally excluded. The word is taken from Hermes, the Greek name for mercury, the heathen god of arts and learning and the supposed inventor of chemistry, which is sometimes called the hermetical art, or perhaps from Hermes, an ancient king of Egypt, who was either its inventor or excelled in it. What is mercury? Quicksilver or mercury is a white fluid metal, the heaviest except platina and gold. It readily combines with nearly all other metals and is used in the manufacture of looking glasses, barometers, thermometers, etc. in some of the arts and the preparation of several powerful medicines. It is found in California, Hungary, Sweden, Spain, China and Peru. The quicksilver mine of Cuancavelisa in Peru is 170 fathoms in circumference and 480 deep. In its profound abyss are seen streets, squares, and a chapel where religious worship is performed. The quicksilver mines of Idria, a town of Lower Austria, have continually been wrought for more than 300 years. The vapor which is continually arising from the mercury is very hurtful to the miners, who seldom survive many years. Abyss, a gulf. A depth without bottom. In what state is mercury usually found? Either native or in the form of ore. It is often found mixed with silver, but more frequently with sulfur in the form of sulfuret, which is decomposed by distillation. The running mercury is found in globules in America and is collected from the clefts of the rocks. Mercury has the appearance of melted silver. It is neither ductile nor malleable in the state. It is a substance so volatile when heated that it may be evaporated like water. It is always seen in a fluid state, even in temperate climates, as a very small portion of heat is sufficient to preserve its fluidity. It is used to separate gold and silver from the foreign matter found with those metals. Calomel, a valuable medicine, and vermilion, a color, are both preparations of mercury. Globules, small particles of matter having the form of a ball or sphere. What is a thermometer? An instrument for measuring temperature. It consists of a fine glass tube terminated at one end in a bulb usually filled with mercury, which expands or contracts according to the degree of heat or cold. On the scale of the Fahrenheit thermometer, the freezing point of water is marked 32 degrees and the boiling point at 212 degrees. In both the centigrade and the rumor scales, the freezing point is at zero and the boiling point at 100 degrees in the centigrade and at 80 degrees in rumors. The invention of this instrument dates from about the close of the 16th century. It is not known by whom it was first brought into use. Terminated, finished, ended. When and by whom were watches and clocks invented? Watches were invented about the year 1500, but who was the inventor is disputed. They were, however, of little value as timekeepers before the application of the spiral spring as a regulator to the balance. 
The glory of this excellent invention lies between Dr. Hook and M. Huynes, the English ascribing it to the former, the Dutch, French, etc., to the latter. Some asserted pocket watches were first made about 1477 at Nuremberg in Germany. The most ancient clock of which we possess any certain account was made in 1634 by Henry de Wicke, a German artist. It was erected in a tower of the palace of Charles V, King of France. The pendulum was applied by Huens in 1656. What is a pendulum? A weight so suspended from a fixed point that it may easily swing backward and forward. Its oscillations are always performed in equal times, while the length of the pendulum and the gravity remain the same. It is said that the idea of employing the pendulum for the measurement of time was first conceived by Galileo, while a young man upon his observing attentively the regular oscillations of a lamp suspended from the roof of a church in Pisa. It was not, however, till the time of Huens that a method was devised of counting its motions and registering the number of its oscillations. Oscillation a swinging backward and forward. Gravity, the tendency of a body toward the center of the earth. Registering, recording. Charcoal burning, charcoal burning. Gold miners washing ore, gold miners washing ore. To whom is the invention of gunpowder ascribed? Most authors suppose it was invented by Bartholdus Schwartz, a monk of Goslar, a town of Brunswick in Germany, about the year 1320. It appears, however, that it was known much earlier in many parts of the world, and that the famous Roger Bacon, who died in 1292, knew its properties. But it is not certain that he was acquainted with its application to firearms. Who was Roger Bacon? A learned Franciscan, born at Ilchester, England, in 1214. He studied at Oxford and afterwards became professor at that great university. He was familiar with every branch of human knowledge, but was especially distinguished for his extraordinary proficiency in the natural sciences. To him we owe the invention of the telescope, that of gunpowder is ascribed to him as stated above. Although we have no evidence to show whether he discovered its ingredients himself or whether he derived the knowledge from some ancient manuscripts, Bacon suffered some from the ignorance of the age in which he lived, many of his experiments being looked upon as magic. He died at Oxford in the year 1294. What is understood by magic? Magic is a term used to signify an unlawful and wicked kind of science depending, as was pretended, on the existence of superhuman beings and of departed souls. The term was anciently applied to all kinds of learning, and in particular to the science of the Magi, or wise men of Persia, from whom it was called magic. Natural magic is no more than the application of natural active causes to passive things or subjects to produce effects apparently in supernatural. Supernatural, beyond the powers of nature, miraculous. Of what is gunpowder composed? Of saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal, mixed together and powdered. Its explosive force when fired is owing to the instantaneous and abandoned liberation of gaseous matter by the intense heat resulting from the action of the combustibles upon the saltpeter. It is not known by whom it was first applied to the purposes of war, but it is certain that it was used early in the 14th century. Cannons were used at the Battle of Cressy in 1346. Small guns or muskets were introduced into the Spanish army in 1521. Explosive, bursting out with violence and noise, 
liberation, a setting at liberty, is not gunpowder highly combustible. So combustible is gunpowder that a single spark of fire lighting upon any of it will cause it to explode with immense force. And instances have occurred where any storage or magazine of it has taken fire that have been attended with the most fatal effects. It is useful to the miner and engineer as a ready means of overcoming the obstacles which are presented in the search for mineral treasures and in producing materials for building. From many passages in the ancient authors, there is reason to suppose that gunpowder or a composition extremely like it was known to them, but it does not appear to have been in general use, and the invention of firearms is comparatively modern. Dynamite, a recent invention, has a still greater explosive force than gunpowder. Engineer, one who works or directs an engine. Obstacles, hindrances, obstructions. What is saltpeter? A bitter kind of salt called by the ancients nitre but more commonly among us saltpeter. It is composed of nitric acid and potassium. It is found in earthy substances, sometimes native or pure, in the form of a shapeless salt. Vast quantities are found in several of the Mali earths of the East Indies, China, Persia, and also in South America. In India it is found naturally crystallized, and forming thin crusts upon the surface of the earth, it is especially abundant in the United States, being found in immense quantities in the limestone caves in the southwestern states. What do you mean by Mali? Consisting of Mal, a kind of earth composed of different proportions of clay and carbonate of lime, which is much used for manure. There are several different colored mouths, each possessing different qualities. The most common are the red and the white, though there are gray, brown, blue, and yellow colored mouths. What is a telescope? An optical instrument which serves for discovering and viewing distant objects either directly by glasses or by reflection. The invention of the telescope is one of the noblest and most useful of which modern ages can boast. Since by means of this instrument the wonderful motions of the planets and fixed stars and all the heavenly bodies are revealed to us. The honor of the invention is much disputed. It is certain, however, that the celebrated Galileo was the first who improved the telescope as to answer astronomical purposes. The name is formed from two Greek words, one signifying far, the other to observe. Optical Relating to optics, the science of vision. Astronomical Relating to astronomy. Who was Galileo? A most eminent astronomer and mathematician, born at Florence in Italy. His inventions and discoveries in astronomy, geometry, and mechanics contributed much to the advancement of those sciences. He died in 1642. Astronomer, one versed in astronomy. Mathematician, one versed in mathematics, a science which treats of magnitude and number. What is astronomy? That science which teaches the knowledge of the heavenly bodies with the nature and causes of their various phenomena. What is geometry? An ancient, perfect and beautiful science which treats of the relations and properties of lines, surfaces and solids. What is meant by mechanics? The science which investigates the laws of forces and powers and their action on bodies, either directly or by machinery. When the term mechanic is applied to a person, it means one skilled in mechanics, accustomed to manual labor.
investigate, to search, to inquire into, manual, performed by the hand. What is a microscope? An optical instrument by means of which very minute objects are represented exceedingly large and viewed very distinctly according to the laws of refraction and reflection. Nothing certain is known respecting the inventor of microscopes or the exact time of the invention, but that they were first used in Germany about 1621. Minute, small, diminutive. Refraction, a change in the direction of a ray of light when it passes through the transparent substances of different densities. Reflection, a turning back of a ray of light after striking upon any surface. What is the steam engine? A machine that derives its moving power from the force of the steam produced from boiling water, which is very great, especially when, as in the steam engine, it is confined within a limited compass. This useful machine is one of the most valuable presents that the arts of life have received from the philosopher and is of the greatest importance in working mines, supplying cities with water, in working metals, in many mechanical arts and in navigation. By the aid of steam, vessels are propelled with greater swiftness than those which are wholly dependent on winds and tides, and thus trade is facilitated and we are enabled to communicate with distant lands in a much shorter space of time than was formerly consumed. On land, railroads are constructed on which stream carriages run with astonishing rapidity, so that a journey which by coach and horses formerly required two or more days may now be performed in four or five hours. Mechanical Belonging to Mechanics To whom are we indebted for its invention? Its invention is by most writers ascribed to the Marquis of Worcester, an Englishman, about 1663, but it does not appear that the inventor could ever interest the public in favor of this or his other discoveries. The steam engine of Captain Savery, also an Englishman, is the first of which any definite description has been preserved. It was invented in 1698. Since that period, it has been successively improved by various persons, but it is to Mr. Watt and Mr. Bolton of England that it is indebted for much of its present state of perfection. By whom was the steam engine first applied to the purposes of navigation? By John Fitch of Pennsylvania. From papers in the historical collection of Pennsylvania, it appears that the first successful experiments were made at Philadelphia in 1785, three years before the attempts at Falkirk, and on the Clyde in Scotland. The board made several trips on the Delaware and Squeakle rivers, but owing to repeated accidents to her machinery and the want of funds and competent mechanics for the necessary repairs, she was abandoned. In 1807, Robert Fulton, also of Pennsylvania, made his first experimental trip on the Hudson River with complete success. To this distinguished and ingenious American justly belongs the honor of having brought navigation by steam to a state of perfection. In 1890, the first steamship crossed the Atlantic from Savannah to Liverpool, and in 1838, a regular communication by steamship was established between Great Britain and the United States. Since that period, ocean navigation by steam vessels has made rapid progress and, at the present time, numbers of steamers connect our various seaports with those of other nations and with each other. What is the electromagnetic telegraph? 
an instrument or apparatus by means of which intelligence is conveyed to any distance with the velocity of lightning. The electric fluid, when an excess has accumulated in one place, always seeks to transfer itself to another until an equilibrium of its distribution is fully restored. Consequently, when two places are connected by means of a good conductor of electricity, as, for instance, the telegraphic wire, the fluid generated by a galvanic battery, and if the communication be rendered complete, instantaneously traverses the whole extent of the wire and charges at a distant station an electromagnet. This attracts one end of a lever and draws it downward, while the other extremity is thrown up, and by means of a style marks a slip of paper which is steadily wound off from a roller by the aid of clockwork. If the communication is immediately broken, only one wave of electricity passes over and a dot is made upon the paper. If kept up, a line is marked. These dots and lines are made to represent the letters of the alphabet so that an operator employed for the purpose can easily read the message which is transmitted. The electromagnetic telegraph was first introduced upon a line between Baltimore and Washington by Professor Morse in 1844. At the present time, it is in successful operation between nearly all the important cities and towns of the United States and of Europe. An electromagnet is a piece of soft iron rendered temporarily magnetic by being placed with a coil of wire through which a current of electricity is passing. End of chapter 12 Recording by Ashwin Jain